Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel for another retro 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review by Hot Toys and today we're going to be taking a look at none other than Thanos, uh, the battle damage version from the uh, 2019 film Endgame. Um, this, film, this figure came out about uh, 2021, it's about two years old now, does that classify it as retro? I'm not 100% certain, probably not, but we're going to call it retro for argument's sake. Um, and yeah, uh, I am almost sat in another room, this box is so big. Uh, I suppose you'd expect it to be, being a 1-6 scale representation of the, uh, the big guy himself. Uh, but yeah, as always, we'll be taking a look at the, uh, at the box, uh, looking at the, diving down to the table, looking at all the accessories, everything that you get with your Thanos figure. Uh, it won't be into the detail this time round, uh, because this guy simply doesn't fit on a detail shelf. Well, it does fit on a detail shelf, but that's if you take away the, uh, the rather impressive stand that this figure comes with, and you get him in some kind of weird stoop, he will fit into a detail. So we'll be improvising uh, when it comes to the final look at him. But uh, just before we get into it, uh, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's liked, commented, and subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss anything that's coming up. Lots of content coming up on the channel in the new year. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. So the box. Um, before we get into the box, though, just a, a quick comment on um, uh, uh, on the film itself, on Endgame itself, and Infinity War. Uh, bit controversial, I know, but for me, that's pretty much uh, those two films mark the swan song uh, of Marvel, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they were a bit like The Godfather Part One and Part Two uh, of the superhero world, and I doubt very much whether we'll see the likes of uh, the quality of, of those two films ever again. Uh, which is a shame, really. Um, a lot of that's down to Disney, in my opinion, getting their hands on it and doing what they've done to it, uh, done to the Marvel license. Uh, but for me, pretty much the Marvel Universe came to an end with Endgame, ironically. Uh, but that's enough of my opinions on, uh, on the Marvel Universe. Uh, let's crack on. Let's take a look at this box. Not sure how we're going to manage this. As I say, I'm virtually sat in another room here trying to film this thing. It's that big. Uh, huge box, absolutely huge, uh, quite imposing as you can see. Artwork on the front is exemplary. Uh, there's an image of Thanos there, the colours, there's sort of uh, sparks going off, there's purples, there's golds. Um, the lighting effects on here are fantastic. Yeah, it's simply a, a wonderful box from Hot Toys. Hot Toys at their best, huge A here. Uh, and then Avengers Endgame in the middle, Thanos Battle Damage version. Uh, the usual Hot Toys bits and pieces. I'm going to see if we can spin this thing round. As I say, absolutely huge. And I am sat some distance away, so I'm having to reach here. On the sides, you've got uh, Thanos, Battle Damage version again. Uh, around the back, a lot of information here. Uh, there's all the uh, usual warnings. Don't piss this figure off, or it may destroy half of your species. Um, there's the designers, the, the warnings, the, all the credits, everything packed onto the back there. Uh, bring it round again, and once again we've got uh, Thanos Battle Damage version endgame on the side there. This is a slipcover design, and I'm going to try and do this on camera, which is not easy, I might add. But yeah, this has been out of the box, it's been in my display, I've had it for a while, so there's no figure in there, but we'll get the top off, uh, so you can just have a... A look at the box itself underneath. Obviously, figure goes here, windowed if you're wanting to display it that way. Uh, I am uh, one for getting my figures out of the boxes, as you well know. Um, simple design on the side there, bring it around the back, that top's come out. Uh, this rather nice gold colouring uh, all the way around. And once again, the Avengers A symbol in the middle there. So yeah, that's your behemoth of a box. So without further ado, let's uh, do as we always do, dive down onto the table and take a look at all the accessories that come with your Thanos figure. Okay, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your uh, Thanos figure uh, from Endgame, the Battle Damage version. Uh, now it looks like there's a hell of a lot here, but there actually isn't that much. It's just simply the scale of the figure itself. Obviously, Thanos was a huge character. Uh, he's in proportion uh, to uh, two other 1-6 scale figures. Uh, so it looks like there's an awful lot here, but there actually isn't that much. But what is here is huge and very, very well done. So as always, let's crack on with the hands. You know me and my hands. So let's, uh, you get uh, uh, six, uh, six hands in total. That's three pairs. 
Uh, there's another one already on the figure. You've also got these uh, gauntleted hands as well, the Infinity Gauntlet itself, which we'll take a look at separately. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the normal hands uh, uh, to start off with. And I have to say straight away from the get-go, these hands are magnificent. They really are. I mean, obviously, as you scale up a figure, uh, the level of detail can be that much more uh, the uh, the paint applications can be that much better, but uh, I think this really, really is a good example of uh, hot toys at the height of their powers, shall we say. Uh, the paintwork on these hands is simply phenomenal. Not sure if the uh, camera's picking up this wonderful sort of purpley blue hue that uh, we all know and love Thanos' skin had, uh, but uh, the paint applications on here are phenomenal. Uh, there's creasing in the hands. You can actually see the uh, individual lines within the skin. Uh, there are a, a flex of, uh, uh, of moisture on there, They're almost like beads of sweat. They give you a real lifelike quality. Fingernails are superb. Um, the multiple paint washes and applications are phenomenal. And the sculpting itself of, the, uh, of this uh, gauntlet, it's got like a leather effect here. There's some wonderful weathering on the, uh, on the metal part. It's all one piece of sculpted plastic, but uh, you can see the washes in there the dinks and the scratches, uh, all superbly done. Really, really phenomenal work from Hot Toys there. Uh, I'm in hand heaven when I look at these, I really am. Let's take a look at another one. I mean, we have an open palm one there. This is another open palm, sort of semi-gripping open palm hand, and it's the same story here as well, the same high quality of paint wash. Uh, I'm loving these flecks uh, of moisture to give it that sort of uh, damp look, I think. Uh, uh, or slightly wet look. This, uh, the, the, this the darker shading on the knuckles uh, uh, on here as well. We've got another hand here. This is more of a gripping hand. This is great for uh, actually gripping the head of Tony Stark or Iron Man or Captain America or any other uh, of the uh, Hot Toys or other manufacturers, uh, um, Avengers figures that you might have. Uh, and uh, I have to say, incredibly photogenic figure. And if you do have any other, in, uh, any other figures in your collection, it really, really does make a great centerpiece to uh, create, recreate some of the scenes from Endgame. Uh, so yeah, all these hands, there's a fisted hand here, all have the same superb quality of uh, paintwork, uh, of sculpting, uh, and the level of detail is phenomenal. Not an awful lot I can say about these hands. A 10 out of 10, most certainly. Uh, while we're on the hands, let's put these to one side because there's not an awful lot of room here. Uh, we'll put these to one side and take a look at these gauntlets. Now there's two of these that come with the figure. Um, he has a, well, well, we'll come to the actual, uh, the, the way the arm works when we get the figure out. Um, once again, these are simply superb. This is the snapping uh, finger, snapping hand. Uh, I'll try and get a little bit more light in on this uh, so you can, uh, see this uh, uh, the, the level of detail here is phenomenal um, the uh, from the paint washes the dints the uh, the battle damage effect uh, runs through the gauntlet as well as you can see here there are cracks with washes in them um, there are the scratches and dints uh, and these uh, uh, the, the paint applications are fantastic from the silver and the gold uh, to uh, i mean obviously this is the one that's minus the infinity stones uh, this is when he snaps and realizes that he doesn't have the stones in his hand uh, or in the gauntlet rather but yeah the level of detailing is is simply phenomenal uh, i'm not sure whether the camera's picking up the the wonderful colors here as well uh, but fantastic fantastic sculpting fantastic level of detail uh, phenomenal work there from hot toys there is a second hand uh, now this hand actually i believe is the illuminating hand yes it is yeah now Difference here is, is these thing, uh, I mean, it's very, very similar, but uh, obviously this one's got the infinity stones in there embedded in the, uh, in the knuckles and uh, on the back of the hand and on the thumb knuckle as well. Uh, but that same level of detail is continued throughout here uh, and the same quality of paintwork and sculpt. Uh, and each of these fingers is individually articulated. It looks like there's one, maybe, maybe three, two or three, it feels like two maybe three points of articulation in each of these, uh, each of these fingers, including the thumb as well, uh, which is fantastic. And it's got the right level of, uh, of, of tension to it as well. It's not too loose, not too stiff. So you can really go to town here uh, with how you choose to pose 
uh, whether it's gripping something, uh, whether it's uh, open palmed uh, or, or hanging onto something, as I said. Uh, and as these fingers lift back, you can actually see the, the level of detail underneath here with the, in the crevices with the washers and the, the, uh, the, the, the paint applications and the dirt and the grime on here. Phenomenal, simply phenomenal. Um, I haven't got enough things to, good things to say about this figure, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's three points of articulation in each of those fingers. One at the knuckle, one at the, uh, the, the center of the finger, and one at the end as well. Uh, so phenomenal work there. So you get two of those. This does have a party piece, by the way, this, uh, this hand, which we'll get to when we, uh, when we get the figure out. Uh, but it involves these batteries that come with the, uh, the figure itself. So uh, yeah, that's the hands. What else do you get? Okay, um, let's take a look at his, uh, his battle damaged helmet. Um, very, very nicely done here as well. The same level of high quality of paint application. And I, I know there are, there are multiple versions of this figure. Uh, there's the clean version, and I, I hung on and waited for the, uh, the battle damage version. There's just something about the battle damage version that I think has more character. Uh, and it's personal taste, but that's, that's just me. Uh, I, once again, that battle damage is reflected in this helmet. There's a part missing here. As you can see, there are dinks, uh, scratches. Uh, there's dirt painted on here. You've got multiple layers of wash. Uh, paint wash on here to to give it that dirtied effect and this has continued all the way around the helmet uh, the, the scratches and uh, and dints have continued all the way through just phenomenal phenomenal paintwork there from hot toys and as i say uh, in my opinion this is hot toys doing what they do best um, so yeah that's the helmet which will fit either of the two uh, head sculpts that we'll come to next you also get this spare arm now once again, we'll, uh, we'll come to this when we get the figure out because there's, a, there's multiple ways of, uh, of, of posing this figure. Um, so this is the, uh, the spare left arm. So you don't actually have to have him with gauntlet on. You can have him minus the, uh, the, the gauntlet, uh, but uh, and it, it pegs here uh, into the arm. But as I say, we'll take a look at that when we get the figure out itself. Once again, same high quality of, of paint washes and applications, all well, sculpted plastic obviously this uh, this hand will come off if you're wanting to use uh, any of the other ones over there uh, and once again the same high quality of paint applications and sculpting on that hand uh, let's put that hand back on for the time being so you can see how this works uh, and I must say as well because of the size of these pegs uh, they just they just function better they feel more sturdy less likely to break when you're putting a hand on uh, I think that's more down to just the sheer scale of this figure more than anything else. Uh, but yeah, that's your spare arm. Um, as I said, well, it becomes more self-explanatory when we get the figure out. Uh, so spare arm. Let's take a look at his weapon of choice. Now I want to call this a sword. Uh, it's not technically a sword or a double-edged sword, I suppose, or a double-bladed sword. But this is the battle damage version, the broken version. And uh, yeah, once again, the, the, the level of detailing here is, is amazing. Uh, I'll try and get this into the camera so uh, and get the light to reflect off this correctly. Just look at the, 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 the just looking at the, the intricacy uh, of the sculpt work here, down to the paint washes, there's dirt on this blade, what almost looks like a, 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 a watered wave effect on here. There's an edge to the blade which has been shaded. Uh, the sculpting is really, really nice. You've got contrasting paintwork here on the hilt and on the handle, which is a slightly more brassy color. Uh, the level of detailing is, is just, uh, is completely on point. Uh, and then you get to this, this sort of the, the broken end. Uh, I'll, I'll flip this round so that the light catches it better. Uh, and on the broken end here, you've almost got a, a red hue uh, painted in a uh, shaded paint of uh, red, red paint almost shading there. Uh, where, the, where the, the sword itself has been broken. But yeah, absolutely phenomenal work there from Hot Toys. Lovely bit of sculpting. Uh, and uh, yeah, in exceptionally effective and incredibly screen accurate. So that's the sword. Uh, I want to call it a sword. And let's take a look at these head sculpts. Now, you get two head sculpts with this figure. Um, both of them are phenomenal. Um, I have a preference, but uh, let's start with... Uh, the surprised look. 
Um, now this one, uh, I am assuming, is probably better used when uh, when he does uh, when he's attempting to snap uh, and doesn't have uh, the infinity stones, and then the look of shock on his face when he realises things have gone pear shaped. Uh, but yeah, um, the quality of this head sculpt uh, sort of speaks for itself, really. I'm not sure once again if the camera's picking up the uh, that lovely purpley blue hue, uh, completely screen accurate. The sculpt. Phenomenal, really, really phenomenal. That's uh, Thanos, uh, as played by Mr. Brolin, uh, absolutely down to a T. As you can see here, the, the, there are multiple paint washes and applications. It's got that same um, a slightly dewy, moist look to it, almost sweat-like, which really, really brings it to life and makes it pop. But you have uh, the, 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 the lines in the skin there, the lines around the eyes, under the eyes. The eyes are beautifully glassy. Uh, the uh, the scars on the face, the battle damage on the face, has that that wet application of uh, of, of red paint, which is is turned even deeper a deeper red by the sort of purple hue of his skin. Uh, sculpting phenomenal, um, paint application exemplary, and, uh, and and overall, as I say, hot toys uh, at their very very best. So. That's the surprised head sculpt. Uh, my preferred head sculpt next. This is the angry Thanos head sculpt. Once again, exactly the same high quality of sculpt, exactly the same quality of uh, high quality of paint applications. But now we've got this grimace and we've got the exposed teeth and the paintwork and sculpting in there is phenomenal. Those teeth are simply amazing. They really are. Uh, and uh, the, the, the grimace, uh, and the anger captured perfectly there in that sculpt. So, yeah, wonderful work there from Hot Toys. I shall sing their praises from the rooftops for the work that they've done on this. So that's your two head sculpts. Finally, uh, we come to the base. Now, viewers of the uh, uh, viewers of my channel will know that I absolutely adore this base. I have uh, I have two or three of these bases, which I use for other figures as well. Um, so we'll bring it into. Actually, what we'll do first of all is get these out of the way because this has got some heft to it, this base. Uh, but as I say, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I find just works for a, a lot of figures uh, in my collection. That's why I've bought multiple versions of it. And here it is. Now, it doesn't look an awful lot. Uh, just looks like a slab of rock. Uh, but it, it's just exceptionally effective. Um, the sculpt work is uh, is really really nice. It's got some heft to it. Uh, at first, I thought they'd put the, uh, um, the, the 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 pole hole, shall we say, in the wrong place, um, because I thought you were losing all of this. But it gives you the ability to be able to stand the figure uh, and have him uh, stepping up, so to speak, on these two, on these two rocks at the back. But the sculpt work is fantastic. I'll see if I can get this into camera. Uh, there's pits and holes and cracks in this rock, multiple paint washes to give it that beautiful stone effect. Uh, and that's continued all the way around, as you can see. Uh, and it just uh, uh, very simple, exceptionally effective. And as I say, if you are that way inclined, a great base for multiple other different types of figures as well. And it's got some heft to it, this as well. Uh, it's got some feet on the bottom, so it's not gonna go sliding around. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. Um, the clear uh, plastic uh, stand that just simply slots into that hole with, uh, and I, I do like these. This, uh, I'll, I'll take that out so you can see it. I think this is such a good idea. I'd, I'd like to see more of these, um, especially with figures that have got uh, long clothing on, as we've discussed in other, uh, other, other videos where the, uh, the, the standard issue crotch grabber just makes it look ridiculous. I think these are a great idea. So yeah, fantastic work and props to Hot Toys for that one. So there you have it. That's all the accessories that come with your Thanos figure. So without further ado, we'll get down to the main event himself, get the big boy out, get him onto the stand, uh, onto the turntable, if it'll fit and work with it, and uh, take an up close and personal look at the figure itself. Okay, so here he is, the big guy himself, out of the box, uh, onto the table. Uh, no accessories other than the gauntlet added there and the, uh, uh, and the stand. At uh, this stage, we would normally have him on the turntable, but getting him on the turntable um, is a bit problematic because we can't get him all in shot. He is that big. I mean, this is one hell of an imposing figure. It really is a phenomenal piece. Um, so we're going to 
take a slightly different format for this review. Um, the final part, rather than being over in the detail, um, which, as we mentioned before, he struggles to fit into and it really doesn't do him justice, will be staying down on the table, uh, getting some of the accessories onto him and uh, having a, a going handheld so he can get right up close and uh, have a look at all the detailing on it. But we'll, we'll, we'll struggle on with what we've got. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's just it's just an incredible figure. Um, the first thing that hits you when you when you've got this figure in hand is the sheer bulk and weight of it. It is an exceptionally heavy figure, as you'd expect for a figure this size. I'm not a hundred percent certain how how tall this guy is. That's uh, actually while we're here, let's have a look. Somewhere in the region of sixteen inches tall, so uh, quite quite big. Uh, so you're going to need somewhere. Uh, uh, quite spacious to display this guy if you're going to get your hands on him um, but yeah uh, we'll work with what we've got as I said we'll, I'll spin him around manually so you can just get a, a look of how uh, of how this this guy actually looks all the way around and uh, it is truly spectacular uh, from the uh, as you can see there's there's uh, that battle damage is continued throughout the armor this is all uh, plastic plastic and, uh, and rubber this uh, armor, the, the articulation on this figure is exceptional as well. It's got some very, very sturdy ratchets in all the joints. Uh, you've got these uh, fantastic seamless arms, which we'll take a closer look at. Um, yeah, uh, this is more for you to get an impression of how this guy actually just looks from a distance. Uh, but what we'll do next, uh, so we can get a closer look at the, uh, the armor, the materials used, the paintwork and everything else, and, and that head sculpt is we'll go handheld for the next section and then we'll wrap this whole thing up so uh, without further ado it's over to handheld just before we go down to the handheld section i thought i'd give you an idea of how i display this guy on top of the detail uh, so before we get up close and personal let's just have a a quick look at the overall package uh and uh, yeah uh quite impressive it is too so yeah, that's how I choose to display him. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, go handheld and uh, take a closer look at the big guy. Okay, so here we are back again with uh, the M game Thanos from Hot Toys, uh, gone handheld for this section. We won't be going over to the detail like we normally would uh, at the end of this review, simply because, as I mentioned before, this guy doesn't fit in. Uh, he tends to uh, reside on the top of one of my details, uh, but uh, the lighting we've got here, hopefully will do him justice. Uh, as always, we'll start at the bottom uh, and work our way up. Um, we'll start with that rather nice base we've already taken a look at. Uh, we'll uh, and start with the feet. Um, and these feet are rather rather well done. They really, really are. They, they, the 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 quality of the paintwork here is is exemplary and it's uh, continued throughout the entire figure. Um, the, uh, uh, the the dirt washes on uh, on on this plastic which is sculpted over another layer of harder plastic um, to give it this sort of multi-layered uh, effect on the shin guards with the knee pads as well. Uh, there are multiple paint washes in there in the crevices. There's dirt, there's grime, there's speckling on there. It uh, looks absolutely fantastic. Also as well, these feet have uh, this split cut design, which means the toes move independently through about 30 degrees, which uh, really, really does come in handy when posing it on this base. Um, because it's obviously not the most even of surfaces. Uh, so, yeah, and also great for action poses as well. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, uh, the quality of the, uh, of the paint washes and the, uh, and the battle damage and the, the dirt, dirtying up, so to speak, is, uh, is the same on both sides. You've got it on, the, on these uh, thigh pieces, which are one piece over the top of the, uh, uh, of the skeleton itself. Underneath there, you've got this black cotton uh, underlay which obviously gives you uh, uh, that dark appearance in any gaps that might appear which is continued up through this area as well uh, the, the, this section here this uh, the, uh, the bottom of the abdomen that hangs down it feels like a rubber it's a thick rubber or a, a thick plastic but it's very pliable which is absolutely really, absolutely essential really in, in this torso section if you're twisting to pose uh, so these things will actually lift and bend and then if you put it back into a neutral pose will fall back into place again um, yeah so the, the the quality really is outstanding here um, so moving up 
um, and once again that paint, that paintwork uh, and that sculpting is continued throughout the uh, the abdomen section across this chest piece and the shoulder area you've got different color you've got bronze colored paints in there i'm not sure whether the camera's picking this up there's gold effect lighter areas of gold there's dints scratches multiple paint washes um, all varying degrees of uh, of wear and tear uh, is that it really is those uh, multiple paint washes so i'm picking out four or five different colors there which really give it that depth uh, and on and also that metallic look as well um, moving down uh, we'll take a look at this gauntlet before we get onto the actual body itself. Now, this is the, uh, the, the stoned gauntlet, the one with the, the mobile fingers that I've got in here. Uh, it has its party piece, and if we come round here, uh, and this is actually attached to this section of the arm, does come, uh, does come away if you're replacing the arms, as we mentioned before. In fact, uh, let's bring that one into shot so you can see it. This is the other arm, and simply... Uh, you unpeg this arm here, peg this one on here, there's a peg underneath there. Relatively straightforward to do. But yeah, to get it to do its party piece, uh, there's a panel underneath here. You lift the panel off, uh, pop in your button cell batteries, and there's a little switch there. Uh, and uh, effectively that lights up the infinity stones across the knuckles and on the back of the hand as well. Now, not something that I do. I'm not a huge fan of button cell batteries. Their lifespan is, is appalling. Uh, and uh, some of these LEDs aren't the brightest. Uh, I know a lot of people do uh, sort of uh, uh, external jobs on this, get it customized, get it USB'd up so you can get, uh, you can have it to lit all the time. Not something I'll be doing, but that's an option there, I suppose, if you're wanting to, uh, if you're wanting to do that. Uh, the body itself uh, is seamless. Well, the arms are seamless. The uh, shoulder areas are ratcheted. Uh, once again, with the same sturdy ratchets that you get in the knee joints. Uh, it's a real satisfying click and clunk when you when you actually uh, start moving this figure around to pose it. Um, but as with all figures that are seamless, I would say be careful of leaving these arms under any kind of real stress for any length of time, uh, because we all know what happens when uh, when you leave uh, uh, rubber stroke plastic arms, seamless arms under uh, under stress for periods of time. They have a habit of ripping or splitting. Uh, but this does feel particularly solid. It really, really does. Normally you get that hollow feeling where there's a gap of air between, uh, uh, between the, uh, the rubber seamless arms and the, and the scant underneath it, but the, there is none of that here, uh, which suggests to me it's, actually, it's just actually been stuck over the top of the, uh, uh, of the arm itself. But uh, as with the head sculpt, as with the hands, let's move over to this side so you can get a better look, the uh, quality of the paintwork uh, on that skin uh, is is phenomenal there are creases in there as you can see um, there's the wet look blood paint uh, there's also that sort of flecking of uh, of moisture almost that we spoke about uh, on the head sculpt as well that really really gives it that that lifelike feel and that depth uh, that, uh, uh, that, that that really sets this figure apart uh, on up to the head sculpt this is my preferred head sculpt as we spoke about down on the table uh, this is the one i'll be displaying it with simply phenomenal i like the angry look uh, let's put the uh, uh the helmet on this guy um, so you can see what it looks like with the helmet on this is my preferred look helmet on angry head there you go um that that's that does it for me that's thanos all over uh, but yeah let's see if we can't spin this guy around a little bit which is not going to be the easiest thing in the world uh, We'll go past this, we'll take a look at it while it's passing. This, that wonderful sword that we spoke about and the detailing on there, phenomenal. And we'll uh, bring him round so we can take a look around at the back. And uh, it's pretty much the same story, to be honest with you. Uh, you've got those, uh, I mean, these gauntlets are, they are simply fantastic. They really are. Uh, the, the workmanship here is wonderful. But yeah, that rubber skirt, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, is continued round the back. Uh, so that will fall back into place. All this is sculpted plastic on top of, as I say, what feels like hard plastic and rubber. The, uh, the quality of the paint continues on the back there. Let's see if I can't just move this guy a bit further forward. Uh, there we go, so we get some more light on there. As you can see, all the dinks, all the dints, all the scratches are all there. Uh, all that dirt paint wash. Uh, yeah, phenomenal, really, really phenomenal. And as I said, I may have said before, but it bears repeating. This is me, to me, this is Hot Toys doing what they do best. Yeah, Hot Toys at their best. Uh, so there you have it. That is Hot Toys 
Endgame Thanos. Uh, I suppose all it remains for me to say is thank you for watching. Look after yourselves and happy collecting. Uh, please hit that like button. Hit, drop a comment in the comment section below. Do you have this figure? Uh, what do you think of it? Uh, hit that subscribe uh, button. We've got lots of lots more content coming up in the future. Um, off the top of my head, uh, in the not too distant future, there's version two of Bill the Butcher. There is the blue version, Redmond Toys blue version of Gary Oldman from Dracula. Uh, what else? We've, uh, we're venturing into a slightly different scale with uh, a Godzilla piece from Godzilla minus one. Uh, Ellen Ripley from Aliens, that's the uh, Blitzway and Iron Studios uh, quarter scale uh, statue, that's coming up. As I say, lots and lots of content coming up, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. So yeah, there you have it. So I suppose all it remains for me to say is uh, it's goodbye from me, it's goodbye from Thanos, and take care of yourselves, happy new year, and happy collecting. Mm -hmm.